So I want to talk about whether scientists and researchers should have side gigs. This is a strong, there's a strong norm at this moment about whether you should have a side gig or not. And the general consensus is that you're wasting your time if you have a side gig, that you are not a serious researcher, that you don't know what you're doing, that... Um, all of these kind of things, and this is going to kind of come up in your tenure review. Um, it's going to come up in all sorts of moments where you're being judged by other people and people are going to say, hey, you know, you're not serious. You're doing this thing. Maybe you're driving. You know, I can think of all sorts of different sort of hobbies and side gigs, right? So a side gig might be might be charitable work where you are, maybe you're participating in your church or your synagogue. Um, maybe you are... Um, you know, leading something in your mosque. Um, maybe you are doing something that it's it's just a hobby. You like to golf on a Monday morning or something along those lines, right? Or maybe you like to ride a bike um, and that's your thing. You collectively like to ride bikes with other people, all sorts of different side gigs. Then there's sort of calmer side gigs, right? Maybe you have a little, maybe you're a graduate student, maybe... Um, you are doing something where you are a barista, right? The sort of thing where you're serving coffee or delivering pizza or driving for Uber. And there's this real notion, notion, there's this real notion that um, if you do those things, you're not serious. Means that you are not dedicating your whole life to the career. You're not passionate enough about it. There's, you don't have enough things to actually do. I'm going to tell you this at this moment, that all of those things are very healthy to actually do in modern society. I want you to realize that, you know, for example, if you drive Uber and you're a social scientist, for example, you will understand people um, more than you ever understood people because you're essentially getting interview after interview after interview and you have a good sense of who people actually are and what they're going through there's a real disconnect between often researchers and academics because they come from research and academic families it is inherited very strongly i realize that i'm not from an academic family in any sort of way um, and I came in realizing, like, oh, my God, this there is big differences between how people view the world and what they're going through. You know, the, if you are a scientist, for example, and you are making pizzas, I mean, that is a pretty interesting thing to understand the science of pizza. There's a lot that goes on to in, into it. Um, and there's all sorts of difficult mathematical problems and really wonderful things that you would never ponder and think about unless you had that experience and you did it. Now, I'm telling you that, yes, there are moments where you are probably spending too much time doing one thing or the other one, but is that the case? Maybe it's telling you and maybe it is giving you a signal of like, hey, wait a minute, maybe this other thing is not for me. I think maybe there's something else in this world that's actually for me that's pulling you in a stronger direction, that's giving you guidance, that's helping you out. Um, and I, I strongly believe that, that if it's difficult, um, which the whole academic game, I'm not saying it's easy. It's never been easy for me, and I don't think it's easy for anybody. But if it's not fun and you actually do those things, that might actually help you out. So I think about this problem, right? So you might think it's, it's just either or, and you're not serious, and the sort of messages that it shows. But what if, what if perhaps it's an endogenous process? There's a big word for you that people talk about these days. Basically, it just means that without that thing, without having that outlet you would never even participate and you couldn't even do the whole academic thing and i think about that it's not necessarily 
that you know you're not serious you just need it as a thing that keeps you who you are and if you don't have that thing you're gonna drop out of what you're actually doing and i think a lot of side projects are very much that way because then you can do your thing enjoy all the stuff that you actually do but then you go and you distract yourself from the sort of day-to-day -day. there's lots of not so great things that are in the day-to-day -day that you just need a distraction from and whether that distraction which traditionally in the academic game traditionally it's drinking it's you know doing things maybe you're socializing and going out with other academics, going to the pub, it's always this sort of idea that you go to a bar <laughs> at five o'clock and hang out with graduate students and sometimes fraternize with those graduate students. If that's your thing, well, then that's, that is fine, right? That is the traditional way of doing things. But, you know, if you are interested in other things, that is fine as well. If you like doing arts and crafts, if you like, I don't know, just any number of different side projects, all of those things are wonderful to do. They're just different than the convention. And that's it. That's where you got to think about is, hey, I know what I'm doing is different from convention, but the world is big. There's many other people in this world. And wouldn't it be really fun if you created a society of academic uber drivers there's lots of people that do this kind of stuff you just have to find them and figure out who you are whatever that looks like and enjoy the process i think we forget that we're all different we all like different things and if it's the case that you excel at staying in the whole academic game and doing research all, all the time, and that's wonderful. Then you do you, but there's a lot of people that can't do that, and they need to figure out what is good for them as well. And I really want to stress that. Figure out what keeps you going and keeps you ticking, whatever that thing is, and is perfectly fine to do. I think we need to break free from these molds. I know it's difficult to sort of break free, um, but there is a big world. And this big world can grow a lot more if everybody is happy and healthy and doing the things that they wish they could at any given time. The more that we sort of remove these sort of rigid boundaries of what things are supposed to look like and how they're supposed to be, the better off. I think collectively, regardless of whether you're in academia, regardless of you're in industry, regardless of whatever area that you're actually in, we'll be better off.